This conversation with former Supreme Court Chief Justice Conrad Mallett Jr. is part of the James J. Blanchard Living Library of Michigan Political History, a project of the Michigan Political History Society. I'm Bill Ballinger, and I am pleased to be able to interview former Justice Mallett, who is with us in his office. Justice Mallett, let me start out asking you, you are Conrad L. Mallett, Jr. I am. That means there must have been a senior. There's a senior, and there's also a Claudia Gwendolyn Mallett, my mother. My parents, Bill, are, oh, excuse me, were political activists. In the late 1950s, my father was a part of any number of progressive political organizations uh, with persons like Coleman Young, John Conyers, Richard Austin. My mother, interestingly enough, was a part of an international women's group called Women for Peace. In 1959, she went to Russia. And on the Kremlin Square, she and 10 other women from the United States actually marched with signs that said, end racism and ban the bomb. They were arrested uh, and promptly sent back home. At the time, I was six years old, but that was the milieu within which I grew up. My father who had gone to college with and pledged the same fraternity that I'm now a part of with John Conyers. When John decided to run against Richard Austin for the congressional district, of uh, the first congressional district, my father was his campaign treasurer. It was a purely insurgent campaign. Uh, the UAW was on one side. John Conyers, his father was a member of the UAW, was with his son, but not a part of the establishment. Uh, and they won that race by about 150 votes. In 1964. In 1964. So at that point, Jerry Kavanaugh was getting ready to run for mayor and looking around for people to assist him in his insurgent effort against Mary Annie. Uh, John recommended my father. My father turned out to be uh, an asset to uh, uh, Mayor Kavanaugh and became a member when Kavanaugh won of uh, the mayor's executive team, uh, turned into a senior member of Mayor Kavanaugh's executive team, was the first black housing director of the city of Detroit, the first black transportation director in the city of Detroit, went on to get his PhD, became a senior vice president at Wayne State University, one of the founding educators who created the Wayne County Community College under then the leadership of uh, Dr. Murray Jackson. And my father's career with John Conyers, with Coleman Young, with Malcolm Dade, with Bill Beckham Sr. and Jr allowed me, really, to be an upfront participant uh, uh, in all of the political activity going around uh, in Detroit. And the interesting thing for my father was, was that I was interested in it. I was with him a lot. Uh, he would go to a meeting, I would go with him. Uh, this is the way that my father and I connected. He was a really, really, really hard worker. He didn't have time to come to my games. He didn't have time to come to school functions. That was largely uh, the responsibility of my mother. But when my father went to political things on Saturdays and I wasn't otherwise occupied, I went with him. Uh, and, and, you know, I turned into an asset to the old man. Sixteen years old, when he was running for Rain County Commission, I was his campaign manager. Now, let me be clear. I didn't do anything other than what he told me to do, but I was in charge. I mean, I had all of the details responsible for the filing, for being sure that all of the finance reports were done. Now, he would check them, but it was basically me and him. I, and and it, was, uh, it was really, really excellent training. And as it turned out, not only was I interested in it, I was good at it. I, and, and that kind of transformed into a career. Uh, for me. I was a frontline participant in political elections from the time that I was 16. And between my mother and my father, you know, my interest in politics was always real, was always upfront, uh, and always substantive, uh, and, and which really shaped uh, my participation socially. For instance, 
as a lawyer, you know, I mean, I, I guess I, with some small regret, say now that I never participated in uh, state bar politics, well, because my own view was, was that I was participating in real politics, the politics that meant something to people beyond just lawyers. So, you know, I mean, the, that, was, that was the Conrad Mallet, uh, Claudia Mallet uh, influence on their son, Conrad Jr. When did your mother's and father's family come to the Detroit area? Man, that's a really interesting story. My, 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 my mother's father and my uh, uh, grandmother on my mother's side are both from Virginia. They initially were in Chicago. My, my mother's father, Charles Jones, has, was always an entrepreneur and had a taxi company uh, in Chicago, four cabs uh, uh, that he cobbled together. Uh, when he refused to pay protection to some other nefarious organization, they basically blew up one of his cars. He then moved his family to Detroit, started another cab company, and so he had a cab company. Is this company. like in the 20s? This was, yeah, my mother was born in 1929. She moved here when she was five. So in, 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 the, in the early yeah, 30s, early so, the, 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 uh, so he had a cab company, a little real estate company, uh, so he owned three or four houses, he had two or three cabs. He was always producing for his family of nine. My mother's existence with my grandmother and grandfather really was, as much as it could be, idyllic. Uh, she really, really grew up in a stable environment with a hard-working mother and father uh, and with nine brothers and sisters, really a storybook in terms of the quality of her existence. My father's existence is also storybook, but as he would describe it, Bill, Dixonian. Uh, my grandfather was killed uh, in front of my father and he was eight years old when they were living in Houston. Uh, he saw his father die. Uh, he witnessed my grandmother uh, have a nervous breakdown and because she was black received no mental health care at all. He observed her pull herself together, um, never quite completing the repair process. Uh, my grandmother, who I loved desperately, was always a little bit uh, on edge. Um, my father uh, is 6'2". Is, is all of the men on my family, on my father's side of the family, are my height, about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, the Lord made my father taller so that when he would apply for a job, he could lie about his age. Uh, he came to Detroit by himself when he was 14. My grandmother sent him here, supposedly built to live with a family that was supposed to greet him at the railroad station, who never came and who never ever bothered to find out where he was. This in the 30s too? This in the 30s too. So the old man then checks himself into the downtown YMCA, lying about his age, enrolls himself in Miller High School. And think about this, Bill. The old man had a perfect attendance record. And it always stunned me and my sisters. How did my father figure out that school was going to be his exit ticket out of this ferocious, unrelenting uh, poverty that was overlaid with this crisis of dysfunction. Uh, when he graduated from high school, joined the Army, this is a true story. So he, in the, in, in, you know, the Army was segregated then. So he go, gets sent down to Florida. They are taught then as black troops, they're going to be responsible for uh, 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 making airplane t uh, runways. And they're supposed to be going to the Pacific. The Army being the Army, his group ends up being sent to Alaska. Uh, Russia began shaking their saber, and so we decided that Russia was going to attack us from the north, so we had to build uh, 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 runways in Alaska so our planes could land to confront the Russians who we were certain would be coming over the Bering Strait. So it's freezing and the sergeant comes up and says, who knows how to drive this asphalt machine? My father raised his hand and says, I do. And he says, you sure? He said, absolutely. He said, but Sarge, let me ask you, can you give me the manual? I just want to review it. I haven't done it in a couple of years. Father never ran an asphalt machine in his life. Memorizes, memorizes the manual, gets up in it, 
and then spends the next 18 months with his shirt off in the uh, running this asphalt machine. Everybody else freezing to death. He's sweating. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 you know, as he says, you know, listen, we made, I made the very, very best of a terribly bad situation. People were getting frostbitten and everything like that. And my issue always was, was I was, was, was coming out into the cold after sweating uh, uh, up in that uh, hot cab uh, for eight or 10 hours uh, a day. So that's just, that tells you, Bill, who the old man is. I mean, he does a fascinating character, really, really, really ferocious in his discipline, exceedingly smart. Uh, uh, devastatingly well read and a very very serious man believe me did you have any brothers or sisters I got two sisters my sister my baby sister Veronica is a physician she's the chairperson of the OBGYN department for the University of Texas at El Paso my sister Lydia is a, uh, a PhD uh, uh, industrial psychologist from Michigan State University and she's senior vice president for human resources for DuPont were they interested at all in politics no, as you no, were? No. You, you were the guy who got the political gene. I was. I, I got the political gene. Okay, so you're 16 years old. What, are you going to Cast Tech at that going time? Going to Cast Tech at that time. That's exactly right. Okay, and then so you went up through the Detroit public school system. What other schools did you go to? Over I started time? out at McCullough, uh, and then the, the, uh, uh, my mother insisted that we go to Catholic school. Uh, so we went to St. Gregory. From St. Gregory, were you went, Catholic yourself? And still am. Yeah, okay. and, and 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 now that I'm approaching uh, now that in my 60s, uh, I found myself back in church a hell of a lot more than I had <laughs> been in the past. Um, but the the yeah, so we were raised Catholic. My father is Catholic, but it, and, and both my mother and father are Catholic. Um, so we went to Catholic school, St. Gregory, then visitation. Uh, and then uh, we went to Durfee, which was our introduction to. Uh, at the Detroit Public Schools. Uh, it was a great time for me, not so great for my sisters. All three of us went to uh, Cass, uh, which was obviously one of Detroit's great schools then and now. So you got out of Cass, and then what? Got out of Cass, graduated in 1971, and my father refused to allow my mother to fill out any of my college application papers. So the only one that I filled out was Wayne State. And the old man came to me one day and said, are you going to college or going to the Army? And I said, no, no, I'm going to college. And he said, well, where are you going? And I said, I got a letter from Wayne. I'm going to Wayne. And so I started at Wayne, stayed at Wayne for two and a half years. You know, at CAS, I was at CAS with uh, George Cushenberry. George and I were both at Wayne together. Uh, uh, and then after two and a half years at Wayne, I went to UCLA, uh, got up one morning and now, said... Now, why would you decide to go way out to California? You know, I think that I had kind of outgrown the moment that I was in. I was really looking for something different, and I really wanted to see if I could find my way on my own. I knew kind of, Bill, what I wanted to do, which was be in politics, but I really wanted to be in politics on my own terms. You wanted to put a little distance between yourself and your very and my father. overbearing father. or Whose shadow was really, really large. Long. Yeah. It, it, the, the, and it's not so much that he was overbearing in terms of his relationship with me, but he just looms so large. There was in so this much city. to live up to. No locally. question about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you wanted to create your own. Get some distance. Get, get some, some air. Distance. Get and, some air. And go see whether or not what I was made of. I and and went to UCLA. Graduated. Did very well. Um, and what and were you had, majoring in? I had been majoring in political science at Wayne, found it really boring, uh, switched mayors, mayor, ma majors when I got to UCLA uh, and graduated with my Bachelor of Arts in English, and very happy. 